Good evening. We would like to welcome you to the Gathering Place Church online Christmas Eve service. We are so happy you joined us tonight. We'd like to take this moment to wish you a very Merry Christmas, celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus. Please gather around with your friends and family for some fun trivia before watching the service. Thank you for joining us. God bless you all. Merry Christmas! everybody I'm Kimberly and I'm so thankful for 2020 it's crazy to say that but I am so much closer to Jesus because of 2020 and God brought me to gathering place for a reason I needed to grow in my faith and I just listened to his call and listened to the Holy Spirit to bring me to gathering place this year I can't believe I've only been here since September but I'm so grateful for the church family that I have here so quickly and that is all God and I give all him praise and glory and I'm so thankful that he constantly provides this year with money and food and shelter and basic needs but also joy and peace and love through so many different people and I hope you guys have the best Christmas ever and continue to give the glory all back to God bye Merry Christmas Merry Christmas the best part about any tradition any holiday is who is with you and so I just wanted Anna to be on this so that I could share that family is this what is your favorite Christmas memory or tradition? The, um, well, that we get to open presents with Father and Grammy. Oh, so 
spending time with family. And, 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 Yeah, that's good. That is a tradition. Good job. Favorite tradition is about um, Jesus' birthday close to Christmas, and so is my grandpa's. And so is grandpa's. That's true. Grandpa, can you My favorite is making black eyes with my grandpa. My favorite is when we get to go to Indiana and see all our family. John, say Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas from the Colbertsons, 2020. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Happy holidays from the Gardner family. Happy holidays from the Gardner's family. Uh, we would like to talk about our memorable moments on Christmas and, our, uh, and how God has helped us. God helped me with getting through school, even when we were going through virtual and going back in school and then going back virtual for the end of the year. And then talk about your um, memorable moments. Talk about your memorable moments. for Christmas, well, Christmas Eve night, and we just, you know, while it's either cooking or some people, are, some some of us are in there playing the game, we're all just having fun as a family. Hi, we just want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year's from the Bankers. Hi, I just want to say Merry Christmas to the Gathering Place and all my Gathering Place family friends and tell you that I miss you all and Merry Christmas. I hope you have the best Christmas. I know it's kind of a weird time we, we're all going through right now, but you know, we're going to come out on the other side and everything's going to be good. And, and I just want to say Merry Christmas and how thankful I am for Jesus and that he, he put me in a church like the gathering place. And I miss you guys a lot. And um, the best thing that I like about Christmas is to spend it with my friends and family. So we want to say, Merry, Merry Christmas! <laughs> the most memorable moment um, that I can think of for Christmas is um, when last year, um, we started the tradition, maybe two years ago, we started the tradition of all of us wearing matching pajamas and, um, you know, the family and friends coming over to um, the house and we would do appetizers and um, we would say, name that tune. So, um everybody had to kind of guess what song was playing and uh, we would dance, um, do like a Soul Train line um, and just have a good old time because um, family and friends is just, it means, the, it means the world to me. I'm a family person. Um, so just being able to be around family, it was 
um, just breathtaking for me. Um, what God has blessed or done in my life this year has taught me how to be um, humble. And I say that mostly because um, so many of my friends are experiencing hurt and um, anxiety and it allowed me to be able to bless them. Um, And I wasn't able to do that in the past, but God has put it on my heart more heavy now than before and just to be able to be in a situation to bless my friends um, you know that is a wonderful thing Um, also God has blessed um, the adoption process to go through this year on June 21st um, which was super exciting um, for my family and I and also um, the big engagement um, that God has blessed me with a wonderful man who loves all of my kids um, tremendously Um, and I mean I couldn't ask for anything better right now so um, I just believe that God is going to continue to bless my family and do more than what we could even ask or dream of um, for years to come. So, thank you. Happy Christmas! And Happy New Year's from the Amer family to yours. We love y'all! Bye! Bye! Hi, GPC. We're Josh and Kathleen Holden. We wanted to share our Christmas story. We were going to do it with all of the kids, but thought it was better to get them in bed first. So. Our Christmas story actually begins in 2005. Um, Our story begins when God decided to take our oldest daughter home with him to heaven. And um, although that was really difficult, we decided to start praying about how we could use that as an opportunity to serve him. And Josh and I had started looking at ways to sponsor a child through the various organizations that are out there. And we decided that we would link it up to our daughter's birthday and try to use that uh, as a way to remember her and to kind of pay it forward. So there were different concerts that we had gone to and different events and not once did we find anything that really tugged on our heart and told us that it was time to do that. So after multiple years of kind of waiting for that opportunity, I think we maybe had even kind of put it on the, the back burner or forgotten about it. Um, unfortunately then, a dear friend of mine just a couple years ago um, had been blessed with a little girl and she was approaching her second birthday and um, God again decided that it was time to take another angel home. And so unexpectedly, one night, Annalise Kay um, passed away while she was sleeping just before she turned two. And that was really hard. My friend had reached out to me and Although as crazy as that is to have that kind of bond, we got through that together. And um, as Christmas came around that year, she had reached out to a couple friends and wanted to remember her daughter. And she asked us to pray about doing something that we could do in honor of Annalise um, to bless someone else, but to remember her daughter. And of course, and of course, we jumped on the chance to do that and started praying. A couple different options came into my mind, perhaps adopting a child that would have been two years old just for that Christmas or um, just different ideas. And ironically, we had gone to church that Christmas and I think it was a week or two before Christmas, none of the exact dates, but I had been praying about what to do. And our church had never before had a sponsorship in the building. And this tugging came on my heart to go and look at the cards. Again, it's something that we had thought about, but kind of put behind us and I mentioned it to Josh. I ended up walking back and looking at the cards myself at the end of the service as he went and gathered up all of our kids. And when we got back to the table, I again was expecting to really find nothing. Um, But it was not surprising to me that we found a little boy 
Our daughter's birth date was April 10th, and this little boy's birth date was April 11th. We have a son that is interested in engineering, and this little boy on his card said that he wants to grow up to be an engineer. We have another son that has really enjoyed soccer, and on this little boy's card it said that one of his favorite things to do was play soccer. And this little boy's name is Joshua, and my husband's name is Joshua. And there was absolutely no question that in honor of Annalise, that we would sponsor this child. And um, so we got his package in the mail. We wrapped up this frame, and on Christmas morning, all of the kids opened this frame, and we got to tell them that Joshua is now part of our family, our forever family, and we have been mailing him cards and letters and Christmas gifts at every holiday, um, Easter, and we have got to share his life with our kids. And my dear friend Jennifer also knows that Joshua has been sponsored in, daughter, in, in memory of Annalise and ultimately what we had wanted to do for our daughter Rose as well. So I know 2020 has been a difficult year for many of us, but never forget that God always has a plan. It's always a good plan. And we wish you the merriest Christmas. Hi, Merry Christmas from the Stokes family. We can't get wait to go worship with everybody together and hope you guys have a happy holidays. And we wanted to say again, just Merry Christmas from two of the Stokes family, Justin and, and, and mom, me, Tracy. So have a Merry Christmas. Enjoy this time with your family. It's so good to do life with each other and to have family that you can love on and hug on and kiss on during this holiday season. So we love you um, and can't wait to see you all. Bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It's Christmas time. It's one of the most truly wonderful times of the year as we remember the reason for this beautiful season. God has just blessed the gathering place. He's blessed me personally, my family, and I think of all the Christmases that I have enjoyed in my life with my children, my grandchildren, now my great-grandchildren, and all the years that I have shared Christmas time with, with you at GPC. I just want to wish all of you a very, very Merry Christmas and to let you know that I love you and I appreciate you and all your service and love down through the years. And I love you too. And Jesus loves you. I pray this be the best Christmas you've ever had. Hey, those were hilarious and awesome and heartfelt. Thank you so much everyone for taking the time to send that in to us. We love that we are a family church and are so thankful that we can still connect uh, online like this and just let everyone know how grateful we are for one another. Well, I don't know what your day looked like, but our day was full of our babies just ripping that paper. Right. Paper was going so everywhere. The coveted Moana doll that they, it was a joint gift this year. So that was a very coveted gift. It was so fun for us. Last year, Daniel was still pretty young and Ella, so to really like watch them unwrap gifts was totally different to this year. They were wanting to get yeah. into those gifts and unwrap them. Paper in the mouth, Ella was, oh my gosh. But it was so fun to see the face, like see their faces just light up and just to see the joy was so fun for us. I mean, you guys know your parents, well, most of you watching are parents. That's what it's all about. It's so fun to just give right. the gifts, to see the joy. I don't know, that was so fun for me. So a big thing we're doing as well is obviously we want our kids to know the true purpose of Christmas, the reason behind the gifts, how it points to a greater gift that we've been given. And so we wanna actually take this time and we wanna share the story of Christmas with you. Uh, this was something we did in person in a Christmas Eve or Christmas Eve service about in 2016, uh, but we want to do it online for you. And right now would be a good time to go ahead and get all the kids together and cozy up. And for about the next 10 minutes, Bree and I are going to share the Christmas story. And believe it's going to touch you, it's going to refresh you, and it's going to remind you of the hope that we have 
and inspire you and encourage you as you end this Christmas day, as we come to a close Christmas 2020, let's end it knowing the hope we have in Jesus. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace on the throne of David, and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. And Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think of what the angel could mean. Don't be frightened, Mary, the angel told her. God has chosen to bless you. You will become pregnant and have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. He will be very great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. But Mary asked the angel, How can I have a baby? I am a virgin. And the angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born to you will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. While Mary was still a virgin, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her fiancé, being just a man, decided not to break the engagement quietly so as not to degrade her publicly. As he considered this, he fell asleep, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Don't be afraid to go ahead with your marriage to Mary. For the child in her has been conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And all of this happened to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Behold, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son. He will be called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. This prophecy from Isaiah 7, 14 was given 700 years before Jesus was born. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him. He brought Mary home to be his wife, but she remained a virgin until her son was born. And at that time, the Roman emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. All returned to their own towns to register for the census, And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled from the village in Nazareth in Galilee and took with him Mary, his wife, who was great with child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her first child, a son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. That night there were shepherds in the field outside the village guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terribly frightened, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news of great joy for everyone. A savior, yea, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in Bethlehem, the city of David. And this is how you will recognize him. You will find a baby lying in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes, and suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host from heaven, the armies of heaven praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward men.
the angels left and the shepherds said to each other, Come, let us go to Bethlehem and see this wonderful thing that happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they ran to the village and they found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. The shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who had heard their story were astonished, but Mary kept these things in her heart. The shepherds went back to their fields and flocks, glorifying and praising God. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. And at the same time came wise men from the east to Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn King of the Jews? We've seen the star that arose and have come to worship him. Herod was deeply disturbed by their question, as was all of Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law, said, where do the prophets say the Messiah will be born? He asked, in Bethlehem, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote, O Bethlehem of Judea, you're not a just lowly village of Judah. Your ruler will come to you, who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. This prophecy is found in Micah 5 and verse 2, and 2 Samuel chapter 5 and verse 2. Both were written 700 years before Jesus was born. So Herod sent a message to the wise men, asking them to come and see him. And this meeting, he learned the exact time when they first star saw the star. And then he told them, go to Bethlehem, search diligently for the child, and when you find him, come and tell me that I may go worship him too. After this meeting, the wise men went on their way and once again the star appeared to them to guide them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house where the child and his mother were and they fell down and they worshiped him. And they opened their treasure chests and they gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But when it was time to leave, they went another way because God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. And after the wise men were gone, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother. And the angel said, stay there until I tell you to return because Herod will try to kill the child. That very night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary. His mother and them stayed there until Herod's death. This fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through the prophet, out of Egypt, I have called my son. Herod was furious when he learned that the wise men had outwitted him. He sent soldiers to kill all the baby boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under because the wise men had told him that the star had first appeared to them about two years before. Then later when Herod died, God's angel appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. The angel said, get up, take the child and his mother and return to Israel. All those who wish to murder the child are dead. So Joseph obeyed and he arose and he took the child and his mother and re-entered Israel. When he heard though that Herod's son had taken over as king in Judea, he was afraid to go there. Then Joseph was directed in a dream to go to the hills of Galilee. On arriving, he settled in the village of Nazareth, fulfilling the words of the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And this is the story of Christmas. Wow, 
that gets me every single time. I love that. I love the meaning of Emmanuel, God with us. I think it's remembering that no matter what is happening in our lives, that God is with us. So we're going to take the next moment and we're going to sing Silent Night together. So, I mean, if you just want to like stand up, (laughs) circle in, grab your family tight, remember this Christmas season that God is with you. So Pastor Garrett, before we sing the song, why don't you pray for us and just pray pray a special blessing over um, as we transition really into almost 2021. Right. Father, we thank you so much for this time together. We thank you for what you've done, what this day represents. God, that we have hope, that you're with us, that you're a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, you're the Prince of Peace. I pray everyone watching would be filled with peace, would come to know the Prince of Peace. God, that as we sing and as we worship, that this joy would be deposited within us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I hope you enjoyed this Christmas experience. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope to see you soon. Merry Christmas.